Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So for today's Monday sketchbook kind of session for today, I actually wanted to revisit gouache once again. So I've already prepared some sketches in my sketchbook. So kind of from right to left, we have Hito, we have Tsukasa, and on the bottom is also Tsukasa, and they are characters from Ensemble Stars. Because I have not done Ensemble Stars fan art in a bit, but I've been doing a heck of a lot of little pixel chibi versions so that I can make planner stickers for an upcoming anime convention in the summer. So besides the fact that Hiro and Tsukasa are probably my two favorite from Ensemble Stars, plus probably also, oh, what's his name, Hokuto, I wanted to draw these two in particular is mostly because of two specific instances. But let me talk about the process first and I'll throw up a few screenshots detailing to exactly what I was referring to a little bit later. So to start off, I do have my sketches done with the, I guess like just big mechanical pencil. So it's just an HB pencil, graphite, whatever you want to call it. And I just have those quickly sketched out for the three little headshots. After that, I have the watercolors, which is the Mei Liang this time, which is what I'm using more recently because it's just a little bit more portable than my larger palette that holds my whole bind paints. I also have the kind of older, kind of roughed up brush from Raphael Kalinsky, which is I believe a size six, if not a size eight. And then I also have just a jar of water, some, I guess like a towel as well, so we can draw off my brush. And we are going ahead and starting to do a little bit of the kind of like initial washes. And this helps me determine light source, potential color choices I want to make. And it kind of just primes the paper just a little bit to have that tooth for something for the gouache to kind of stick to before we actually commit to doing more opaque washes, if that makes sense. So this will probably date when I did the sketches because this was done actually just like, I think two days ago, three days ago. Whenever it is Sukasa's birthday is when I ended up doing these paintings because after I finished doing kind of Mingyu's little, I guess I did like a manga page spread for 17th birthday illustrations for the members this time, minus Sungwan because I did a live 2D thing for his. But after I did main gears, I opened up Ensemble Stars and the birthday notification comes up and I thought it'd be cute to draw him because it's been a while and it's kind of appropriate for the occasion. So in terms of the little headshots, so the two of Tsukasa, one he's holding a little cup with like ice cream and these little black blobs. And then the one below that is him with a flower crown. So the one with the ice cream is actually referring to a specific uh, screenshot that I took from the actual game itself. And I was reading the text and the dialogue from the, I guess like the sequence or one of the little cutscene type things that you can get from doing some missions and stuff on their birthdays. And Tsukasa was talking about, I think, wasabon ice cream, which apparently is some kind of like sugar based ice cream, I believe that's like popular in Japan. And he was also talking about black sugar jelly, which I thought might have been similar to something like grass jelly or herbal jelly. So I wanted to include that in a little cup as a dessert because Tsukasa is actually the type to have like a sweet tooth, I believe. So yeah, I don't know. I just think he's really adorable. So yeah, I feel like like every one of my favorites from Ensemble Stars is like my son <laughs> kind of feeling. After that, the one below Tsukasa with the ice cream is Tsukasa with a flower crown. And I did this one kind of like last minute because I wasn't sure if I was gonna add happy birthday on the bottom just for the occasion, or if I was gonna squeeze in one more headshot to fill up the spread. So instead of following the accessories that was in the same screenshot that I took, um, kind of like from the game, I decided to take the little, I guess like a flower wreath necklace, you can call it maybe. And I decided to take the similar design and just use it as a flower crown for him because I thought it would just fit better alongside with, because I could only fit his head. I wasn't able to put like majority of his body. So I felt like the flowers were gonna get cut off too much. But in the end, I don't really paint the flowers all too much anyways. So I feel like it's a little bit pointless. 
So it has been a little bit of a while since I've actually painted with gouache. I'm trying to rack my brain on trying to remember what was the last thing I painted. It might have been flowers, I'm assuming so, but I have just been not doing too much traditional art lately and I've been mostly doing digital because like I mentioned, I've been doing more like digital art prep and merchandise kind of like designing. So for like stickers, I want to make another notebook, a sticker book and like a few other things that I want to have prepared for this coming August because I will be attending anime fawn and finally tabling at a convention again. But I have to make sure I get everything prepped because it's not exactly a local con for me. So I do have to do some traveling to get there. So I won't have access to a lot of my supplies. And do let me know if you guys are interested in potentially seeing some prep work for convention stuff or for, I don't know. I wanted to do a video where I could explain how I <laughs> do my samples for commissions when I take them for like an artist alley convention because luckily my friend is going to be my assistant with tabling which means that I can accept commissions again during the artist alley hours because she can handle majority of my sales while I can work on commissions kind of on the side and you can just like earn extra money but it's also fun because you get to draw a plethora of different characters that maybe you're not um like as well acquainted with so yeah there is like a particular way I like to kind of practice and prep myself for that so I'll definitely maybe make a video about that in the future if you guys are interested but let's talk about the other painting that I will be doing after I finish the two sukasas. also so process wise in terms of doing the gouache I tried my best and I definitely think this is working a little bit better for me to kind of slowly layer up the colors and then once I think the colors are more appropriately I guess like colored in or picked in terms of like the hues and all that I can actually paint with a little bit more of a solid opaque pass over top and I can get a little bit more of a desired look that I kind of enjoy a little bit more so hopefully I can kind of keep this up for future ones that I do in gouache I definitely think the two that I do of Tsukasa is probably my favorite and the one that I do of Hiro is a little bit janky but I also think it's like the order that I did them in I started to kind of like dwindle out my energy so it's like the more I get tired the less I'm willing to kind of keep things looking a little bit more pristine or my choices might be a little bit off but the one for Hiro was also based off of a screenshot that I took because in the game Ensemble Stars Music you can have basically either the character themselves on your kind of like your home screen your main screen of the game or you can have a character illustration so I usually don't pay attention to the text sometimes but when I do and I noticed that it was new text because it's the spring season so usually depending on like the holiday or season their text on kind of like the main screen and it's usually talking to the producer which is you in the game and I don't know, I noticed that it was a change and it was kind of like spring themed. So it says, look, I found a four leaf clover. There's a saying in the city that it's super lucky to find one of these, right? And I thought it was super cute. One, because I love the clover aesthetic. Two, because I kind of just think it's kind of cute to draw Hito in a particular outfit. So hopefully I can find it again. I'll put it on the screen. It's basically him in his normal casual outfit alongside with an apron. So I thought it'd be kind of cute to paint it, but I knew kind of like thinking about myself painting these in the future, I was not going to have enough energy to paint like a full, I guess like a waist up of Hito. So I decided to cut that one kind of like in half and put text on the bottom but in the end I don't even paint the text so I feel like a lot of these decisions were based pretty much on my mood that day that I wanted to paint for the most part but it was so late into the night that I was just getting super tired so I did not really commit to everything. <laughs> also I kept getting interrupted by family members so it was making it a little bit harder for me to like get into the headspace of wanting to paint. Luckily the first Tsukasa, so the one in the upper right, kind of like suffered the least 
you're gonna see that this one's gonna look a little bit funky and partially it's because of how I sketched him. He looks a little bit skewed, but as I started to paint him, I started to shift kind of like the form of his hair into a direction where it no longer feels like it's going backwards and it's kind of like the back of his head. It seems like it's getting higher and higher. So the skull, I guess like his forehead real estate is just getting super large. So it feels like he has just too much hair on his head now. But with that being said, I still like this one. I did try my best because I also noticed that I have a habit of making a lot of my colors very bold and vibrant, but it tends to be in the mid-tone to the darker side in terms of value, which usually when I do like watercolor washes for my like sketchbook spreads or like prepping for gouache, I tend to like the lighter aesthetic a lot and I always feel like I mess up these paintings by putting gouache over them because they never give the same feeling or quality that I would like to. And I know it's on me not being able to like pick how I want to choose my colors because oftentimes I do use the watercolors as like kind of like a rough guide for the colors, but it's not meant to be the exact hue or the exact value that I want the gouache to also be in. So I do have the choice to make a decision like, oh, am I gonna stray away from the color choices or do I want to maintain something that's very similar? And I tried knocking back the colors for this one to be a little bit on the lighter side so that it would appear a little bit softer. And I definitely like it. And I kind of wish I kind of gave that quality to the one above it as well. But I do like the vibrancy of the other one as well. So it's like, it's not too, too bad. It's just something I should keep in mind for the future. If I want to like maintain that airier quality or like the lightness of certain pieces for like future paintings, if anything. Oh, I also forgot that I ended up just splicing up a lot of the footage this time around for the gouache painting. So usually I do a little bit of slower footage in the beginning of the piece and then we usually kick it into time lapse so that it's a little bit easier for you guys to see the full process. But I don't know if I, if I kind of moved my sketchbook around too much or it was just how I was feeling when I was editing this particular piece, I decided that I didn't want to do just full time lapse this time. I rather have just like real time showing you how I'm laying down the colors and how slow it usually is when I'm painting because sometimes using like, or not using, I guess like watching time lapses is a little bit misleading for some people. I know a majority of people don't feel like oh they're painting actually this fast or anything like that but I do think it might skew people's perception still a bit because you will not get a good grasp of how slow the artist is actually working or how fast they are actually working so it's kind of nice to have some slower footage if anything real-time footage so I don't know maybe it's just like my own preference because I tend to watch more traditional art if anything if I'm consuming any art content on YouTube because I just love seeing the tactile kind of process of people painting or layering up with markers, shading with pencils, like all that stuff or even like, I don't know, like mixed media collages. I've watched like Bujo or like bullet journal videos as well. I just prefer the tactility of the process if anything and I wish to do more traditional art in the future but I'll probably be kind of like slowing back or like pulling myself away a little bit from traditional medium as I'm still doing a lot of prep work because conventions are a little bit daunting if anything but like I said I want to be like fully prepared and I'm probably going to be changing up my table setup because I want to include a lot more prints this time around but the table space doesn't really allow me to do so so I feel like I do have to set up one of those how do I describe it? I guess it's like a photo backdrop setup. So you have like two poles or legs. Sometimes people like drape a thing of fabric over it or they just put their prints directly on top of the bar and kind of hang it below. So I kind of want to do something similar. I am worried that I don't have enough art to fill up that space. So I'm going to do a mock-up as well. Um, but yeah, I'll see if I can 
and if I feel comfortable enough to film a lot of the process of me doing some testing for uh, either making merch or like the process of it or table setup for like the mock-up and all that so that I can kind of document it for you guys. Only if I want to because vlog style stuff is not really my... I don't know, my, in my interest, I guess. So I'm not too sure if I'm gonna commit to it, but if you guys wanna see it, I'll try my best to kind of like collectively get some footage and maybe I'll include it into a future video and maybe not vlog style. So maybe I'll just like take photos or something so you guys have something to reference. But, so for the painting for Hito, because I got super sidetracked <laughs> about talking about digital and traditional medium and all that stuff. But the one for Hito, I think, for the most part, I liked his sketch a little bit more than I did of Tsukasa, but the painting is probably the weaker of the bunch, and I think it's, like I said, my energy was kind of just low because we're kind of, kind of later and later into the night, so I was just not putting a lot of energy. I also think the idea of like painting under artificial light in the middle of the night sometimes is not great for me because I was not really able to see how patchy and splotchy Hiro was in terms of, I guess like on camera, you can't really see how patchy his face is, but you can kind of see the patchiness in the darker colors. So let's say his shirt, because the glare from when the paint is wet and the artificial light being above it made it very, very hard for me to see. And Sometimes I knew like I should just cover it up, but for the most part, I just left it as kind of patchy because I didn't really want to deem these ones as like, you have to finish them, you have to make them super clean and stuff. I wanted to leave them in kind of like a state where as long as I was happy with it for the most part, then I would just leave it as is. So. Uh, I think that's it for today's video though. So like I said, I didn't end up painting the bottom text with any gouache or anything. Maybe I'll outline it with a pen so that it'll stand out a little bit. But for the most part, I wanted to just kind of focus on painting with gouache, which I ended up doing. And I actually quite enjoyed the results, like I said, of the two Tsukasas on the side. So I'm not too bummed out about this particular kind of piece or anything. And you can see that this Tsukasa is kind of warped in two different ways. His hair just looks too voluminous to the left and at the top. So it looks like his hair is shifting in a different direction than his face, which looks a little bit funky. But yeah, I think that's it for today and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me doing kind of like a small painting session and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!